Hello everybody and welcome back to another career simulation. Recently, I simulated a career of a playmaker who really wanted to pass, but wasn't good at it. Like at all. And now today we are simulating the career of a sniper who can't shoot. He has the franchise potential, he's got all the other stats there, but for some reason, his shot is cheeks. And obviously we are going to have the shot pass bias in full favor of shot. Will this sniper see any success? Will their shooting category grow and be able to score? Will they do better than the playmaker? There's only one way to find out. Let's jump in. Look how loaded this draft class is. We've got two people above Bedard in the rankings. That is outrageous. And Sniper's supposed to go number one. Jumbo, thanks for coming out. 1,500 points, not too shabby. The Coyotes pick up Sniper first overall at 77. And then we also got another medium franchise player here in Voloshenko. And then Bedard, like what kind of draft is this? That is one of the best drafts I've ever seen. Kind of surprised that he's going first overall, considering he only had 20 points in 49 games. But he will start in Tucson as a roadrunner on the first line. As you can see, his shooting category is absolutely atrocious. Signs that entry-level contract that he will not burn a year off of. Which is good, because the team finished dead last. 64 points, to be fair, they tied with Chicago. But they were 32. He did come up for three games, and to be fair, he was point a game. So gotta give him credit there. Here's the playoff tree. And we got Stahl as the top player, just surpassing 1,000 points. In year number, well, I guess it's three technically of the Sim. But year two of our boy being drafted. He's on the third line of the Arizona Coyotes, who do significantly better, finishing fifth in the Central Division and 35 wins. Still not great, but not terrible. He was a dash 25 with only 23 points. And I kind of just go over to the other stats sometimes to show you what's going on. Zach Benson gets the call. They're his teammate, which I thought was pretty funny. So I decided to throw that in there. And Vancouver Canucks legend Louis Erickson at the top of that retirement class. This year, he'll be playing with Genther and Schmaltz on the second line of the Coyotes. The defensive core not looking good. They got Vitek backed up by Grubauer. And they would once again finish fifth in the Central Division. Sniper puts up 45 points this year, 8 goals, and was a dash 11. No Coyotes in the lofts yet again, but will they get there? That is the question. At 88 overall, playing with Matthias and Clayton on the second line, his shooting category is actually kind of going up. I feel like more than the playmaker's passing was. So that is a pretty positive sign, I would say. They finished 7th in the Central this year, though. A demotion with a nice amount of points, 32 wins. And we only see 33 points from Johnny Sniper, who played the full 82 games. Buffalo Sabres, your Stanley Cup champions. Only took him 5 games, and Ovi retires with 1,038 goals. How about that? Now we have Benson and Keller playing with Sniper on the first line, who signs a new ticket, 10 milli, for 3 years. Kind of a short deal there, but it is what it is. Vanacek and Vladar will be the net-minding crew. The Coyotes finish fifth in the Central. They really seem to love finishing fifth. That is one thing I will give them early on here. A great season, actually. Not really, but like a step-up season. 59 points, and I think that is the best season we have seen yet from Johnny Sniper. That first line looks filthy. Alenko, Benson, and Johnny, who now has low to mid-60s for the shooting category. So again, seems to be making improvement where Johnny Playmaker didn't have the same luck. This year, they make the playoffs, finishing third in the Central and getting 95 points. Sniper puts up 57. It was only a dash five this time around. Had 14 goals, and he also had six points in just seven playoff games. So sure, they got dusted in the first round by the Wild, but that is still a very big improvement if you ask me. Alenko, Benson, and Sniper back at it again with the white vans. We got Koskinen playing with Addison. The defensive core is still rather mediocre. Vanacek still the starting goalie, although the backup has been rotated out a couple times here. The Coyotes finish sixth in the division this go-round. And we see a nice amount of points from Johnny, who was a dash three. 208 shots. So he likes shooting, clearly. Um, just isn't really very good at it. The first line remains yet again, and I mean, they're doing okay, so 
Might as well keep it, I suppose. Shooting category starting to approach the 70s and a five-year, $8 million contract extension is signed with the Yotes. Got a new goalie here in Daigle. Vanacek is the backup. The team finishes with 98 points, fourth in the Central Division, making the playoffs, and we see 62 points from our sniper boy. Five points in six playoff games, so in the playoffs doing quite well. And they would be deleted by the Edmonton Oilers this time. Sidney Crosby surpassing 2,000 points. What a career from that guy. Shot category still in the 60s, albeit pretty close to the 70s. But other than the shooting category, extremely solid player. Look at this team just stacking up on X Factor. Starting to see golds everywhere. They finish second in the Central with 99 points, 45 wins this season. Sniper puts up 54 points. 19 goals and was a plus six. We see only two points in six playoff games this time, which is a bit of a drop off from his previous performance, but at least the consistency is there with the whole losing in the first round thing. Okay, he's got that down pat. I'm also going through the Nashville roster here because they had a complete dynasty. It seemed like they were winning every single year. So yeah, I decided to just kind of like go through and see why they were so good. I mean, they 4 the Penguins this year. And Johnny Goudreau's up at the top with 1373. This first line seems almost inseparable. And I feel like every time we go back to this edit line screen, or view lines, I should say, because I don't play as the team, they have more goals, it seems like. But they return to old habits, finishing fifth in the Central Division. 72 points from Sniper, though. Extremely impressive. That is a big jump up, and Dreisaitl decides he's done, finishing four points higher than Kucherov. That must be devastating. Again, I don't even got to say it, that first line is still there, but I'm going to. I got a new starting goalie as well, and they finished fifth in the entire league. So, their favorite five spot, but this time it wasn't the division, it was the league. Over point a game for Johnny Sniper, first round exit, but also point a game in the playoffs. Now that is solid, and I honestly have no idea where that came from. I guess it's a little bit different than the Playmaker, because he seems to be doing well. The Playmaker was permanently bad, where Johnny Sniper is up there. 108 points for the Coyotes, finishing second in the Central. Sniper puts up 74, a bit of a drop-off from last year, but still rather impressive. Also 30 tucks on the season. Got out of round one, 16 points in 13 playoff games. They went to seven against Chicago in round two there. Their arch nemesis from year one, finishing at the absolute bottom of the league. First line, yeah, you already know. Eight years at 12 and a half million. They are putting all their eggs in one basket. Actually, that's not that crazy of a contract, but still. They really believe in Johnny Sniper and it works. They finished fourth in the league. And we see 75 points with 25 goals from Mr. Johnny, who had 19 playoff games and 15 points. They made it all the way to the conference finals, but the mighty Ducks of Anaheim did not let them get beyond that point. We are now in year 15. The defensive core just doing what it does in the late simulation years always ends up happening like that. Usually the whole team. They finish fourth in the central and we see 96 points and 31 goals. From Johnny Sniper, who now has low mid-60s for the shooting category. Another first round exit. Four goals in five playoff games. Five points as well. Chicago would be the team to put out the Coyotes yet again. And Matthews, very close to 2,000 points, but couldn't quite get there. Even though their overalls have dropped off significantly, they're still putting their faith in that first line. Maybe they're just selling a lot of jerseys. We also got Tactics HD's evil twin as the backup goalie here sniper puts up 77 points in 82 games this guy just does not get hurt 11 playoff games with seven points chicago again they just can't seem to get past this team nate mac does surpass the 2000 mark really like they're just still gonna do it i mean i guess they're making the playoffs they did it again to be fair third in the entire league with 105 Sniper had 78 points and 31 goals this year, was a plus 34, and had 13 playoff games 
with four apiece goals and assists. I just kind of went over there in case anybody wanted to see those stats. It's probably the only time you're going to get to see it. Pedersen, just shy of 1,500 points. Kale McCarr, what a career from the NHL 24 cover boy. Yeah, what do you guys think of that? I'm down. I think he deserves it entirely, and I'm here for it. The Yotes back out of the playoff picture in year 18, finishing 6th in the Central. We only see 55 points from Sniper, so that is a heavy drop-off. And it would be the Nashville Predators again. The Dynasty, because of course, Natchez, Fantilli, and Johnson. Very interesting to see Fantilli retiring. Just because, you know, he hasn't even actually played an NHL game yet. But in here, we just basically simulated his career without actually focusing on how he was doing year to year. The team finished... Sixth in the central and still made it in. He only had 66 points this go round. Was point a game in the playoffs, but yet again, lackluster performance overall. The Golden Knights did not show any mercy. Really? 1,499? That bugs me. Couldn't have played one more game. Anyway, the Yotes back again, year 20. And they're back out of the playoffs, finishing 7th in the Central with just 77 points. This is sort of reverting back to how it started. 51 points in 80 games from Johnny Schneiper. And it would be the Golden Knights going on to win the Stanley Cup. Shane Wright, Eklund, both finishing above Johnny, who had a total of 1,477 games and 1,136 points. That's where his shooting category and the rest of his stats finished off. His best season being that 96-point season, obviously, because that's insane. I don't know how he managed that. He had good line mates, to be fair. He also had that good playoff run, but couldn't win a Stanley Cup. There really isn't much to see for the stats. Normally, we see players move around, but he was loyal to the Arizona Coyotes, playing for them his entire career, and signed 18 years worth of contracts with a total estimated earnings of 163.5 milli. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you could leave a like, that would be fire. If you could subscribe, that would be fire times two. And I appreciate you. I will see you soon.